Hello, in this tutorial I will demonstrate how to use the Patterson Simulation Program. Before you start, you're going to want to go to Edit Parameters. This will open a pop-up that allows you to change the parameters for the simulations and estimations. Here, A represents the optimistic time for an individual activity, and B represents the pessimistic time for an individual activity, M represents the most likely time for that individual activity. In this case, we're saying that the optimistic time for each activity is half the most likely time, and the pessimistic time is double the most likely time. N represents the number of simulations that you will be running. Percentile represents the percentile that is applied to the log normal distribution. And finally, the distribution is the type of distribution applied to each individual activity. Then there's advanced mode, which we'll get into later, but for now we'll leave off. When you're ready, just hit save. You'll see all the parameters listed here and they'll update when you change them. Now we'll go to browse files, and we will find Patterson files that we want to simulate. In this case, we'll go to set1sp, and we'll select the first five files. We'll click open, and it will load them all into memory. Here you can see all the statistics calculated. And for all the statistics related to simulating, they will be shown as negative one, indicating that they are not yet computed. We can also go to the left side here and change the file that we're looking at, as shown in file path and this header here. If we're satisfied with these, we can move it on to simulating. In this case, once again, we're doing 40,000 simulations. So we'll hit simulate. And it will simulate each individual file and update the progress and show the amount of time it takes to complete the simulation in total, including the overhead. And now you can see here that the st statistics for the simulations are computed. If those look good, we can move on to exporting, and we'll name this example. This will save this entire, entire table as uh, a CSV. Now that that's done, we'll go move on to the advanced mode. The advanced mode enables you to look at more specific analysis for projects. In this case, just turn it on in the parameters window hit save, and you can see advanced mode is now true. Now we'll go and load new files, because when you change parameters in, uh, when you change the parameters, these do not update the currently loaded files. You'll have to load the files again. So in this case, we will find new files, and this time we'll go to set 2.1, and we'll get the first five here, open them, and once again, we get the statistics shown here, but we also, as you may have noticed, get a graph for the estimations. In this case, the log normal, the PERT, and the big beta. This is a kernel density estimation graph of these, of these estimations. These look good, so we'll once again simulate. And now you can see that the graph has changed, showing the key with the log normal, PERT, and big beta, as well as a histogram of the simulated data points, all 40,000. You can once again see these statistics for the simulations shown in the table. And you can change which graph and statistics you're looking at using the left arrow buttons. Now we'll move on to exporting. And you can see that when you click export while in advanced mode, you'll get a different window. This shows all the files that you have loaded in and the types of files that you can export. So you can select specific files one at a time, or you can control click multiple, or you could select one and then select one at the bottom by shift clicking and it selects all the ones in between. And of course, you could just select all and that will select every type of file for exporting. Completion times represents the files that are exported 
in this table. So that is the type of file that is exported when you're not in advanced mode. Simulation represents the files that contain all 40,000 data points for each simulation. And the graphs are, of course, the graphs. When you export the graphs without simulating, then it will export the kernel density estimation graphs, as opposed to these graphs, which are scaled PDFs and the histogram. In this case, you will just, we will export everything. And when you export one thing, it will export that file. But if you export multiple things, it will export them in a zip file. In this case, we'll call it sample two. We'll save it. Say it's exported successfully. Finally, there's the merging function. When you click merge, this window will pop up. And this allows you to merge any of these kinds of data sets into one another. So what you do is you start by clicking browse and you find a data set that must be within the format, the same format as the table. In this case, the example file that we exported earlier, click open. And now we can see the name of the file and the directory that it's within. And then we can choose to overwrite files with matching file names. In this case, we don't have any matching file names, so this doesn't matter. But if you had matching file names within the two data sets, you could choose to either overwrite the existing data, which would be the data that's already loaded in, or the imported data, which is the data from this file. So once again, it doesn't matter, so we can select either. We'll click Merge, and it will say it's merged successfully. Now we can see that it actually opened the set one. Remember, we won set two earlier but it opened set one and created the graph for that set. And we can export these and see that it has set one and set two merged together. And if you decided to export the completion times for all of these, this example three, we'll be able to see that it has all two data sets. So if we open these, you can see here's the first example that we exported and it only has set one. And this is the third example that you exported and it has the merged files. Finally, let's look at the second example. So this has the data from the table, which is shown here, Open that quickly. You can see this is for set two. And there's the graphs. And finally, there's the data for each individual simulation. Again, this contains all 40,000 rows for that simulation. Now, a few last things to mention. While you're working in the Patterson simulator, it will save your parameters to simconfig.json. So if anything happens to this file, then your parameters may change. And finally, this temporary directory saves all data that you're working in while it saves all data that's been loaded while you're working in the Patterson simulator. And when you're done with the Patterson simulator and you close it, this directory will be deleted. So make sure to export your files before closing the program. It's also not recommended to move any files from this directory, otherwise you may experience some uh, unexpected results. That's it. Thank you.